practice community. And rest your shoulders and press your soles of feet together and let the knees open wide. Lift the arms up overhead. Grip opposite elbows. Take deep breaths in and out. And as you breathe in and as you breathe out, just arrive in this moment. Letting go of movement and receiving stillness. Letting go of effort, receiving ease. And then allowing the body to find the middle. And the mind to find the moment. the body to step into the middle and the mind to step into the moment. And as you drop into this moment with your breath, Just notice what you can hear when you slow down and what do you feel when you slow down. And then just decide what you are here for, what you want to get out of this practice. Today's theme is about healing our hearts. So what is your heart, your heart's desire? What is your thing that you're working on in your heart today? Maybe it's healing, forgiving, loving yourself, whatever you're seeking. Set an intention to gather that. And then we're going to draw our knees into our chest and give our body a sweet little hug. 
And then hopefully your strap is in reaching distance. You're just gonna hook the strap around the right foot and then lengthen the left leg long. So Tasha referred to this as a leg mandala the other day, which I really liked. But basically we're gonna open the back of the leg in. many directions. We'll take about five deep breaths. And then grab hold of the strap with the right palm and then open the right foot to the right and leave the left palm on the left hip. And then lift the right leg all the way up and switch the strap into the left palm and then draw the right foot all the way over to the left. You can gaze over the right shoulder. And then lift the right leg all the way up. And then we're gonna switch it up. So we're gonna pass the strap around the left foot and lengthen the right leg long and then breathe into the back of the left leg. Take one more inhale, one more exhale, and then open your left foot to the left. You can leave the right palm on the right hip. And then lift the left leg all the way up and let's switch the strap into the right palm and then just draw the left foot all the way over to the right. You can gaze over the left shoulder, take a few breaths. And then just lift the leg all the way up. Awesome, let's do a tiny bit of core. So slide the strap to the side and just draw the knees into the chest. We're just gonna do some little yogi bicycles. So you're gonna curl your body up and tap right elbow to left knee and then just hold it there for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tap left elbow to right knee, hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one, tap opposite elbow to opposite knee. And let's just do five more, four more, three, two, and then last one. And then just draw the knees all the way into the chest. Give the body a nice little hug. Plant the feet onto the mat and plant the palms on the mat. Lift the hips up. Roll the shoulder blades under. Interlace the palms. Just come into your bridge pose. Pressing through the feet. Pressing the pinky side of the palms down onto the mat. Just lifting up through the heart. Take a few breaths.
And then we're going to release all the way down. Just take the palms on the backs of the thighs. Do a nice rock up to seated. And from your seated shape, let's just do a little bit of shoulder stretching. So drop your right earlobe down towards your right shoulder and plant the right palm. Stretch through the neck. And then lift the head all the way up and then land the left earlobe down towards the left shoulder, land the left palm, stretch through the neck, take about five deep breaths. And lift the head all the way up. Let's take the palms onto the mat, just roll all the way over. And then tuck the toes and come all the way up and back into your first downward facing dog of the day of the practice. Maybe you've done one already before today. I already have done a few down dogs. And just arrive in this moment, create this V shape with the body. Let your head go, rock your head no to no more tension. And then give it a little rock yes to the practice of yoga. And then we're gonna take our right leg up towards the sky, bring it up into a three-legged dog, nice work. And then just draw the right knee in, coming into a core plank. So you shift the body all the way forward, good. And then see if you can take a step forward with the right foot between the palms. Nice, rock forward and back a little bit so you're getting into the hip crease. And then you're gonna land your left knee on the mat. Leave your left palm where it is, reach your right arm up. And then perhaps you kick the foot back. We're gonna take a little quad stretch for Katie. And then just release the left foot, take the right palm forward, walk the fingertips back, lengthen over the right leg. Today I did a very different kind of yoga class than I typically do. Let's walk our hands forward and we're gonna do this movement again. So we're gonna kick our left foot back, take a little quad stretch. And release the right palm and then walk the fingertips back. So I do, I typically do power yoga every morning at the yoga barn. Let's do it a couple more times. And in my power yoga classes, I have these like two really handsome yoga teachers from LA <laughs> who um, play really fun pop music. And it's like a really, really fun energy. But I've been doing, I've been going there for almost a year. So I'm really used to their class. I'm really used to their challenge and their styles and um, and their practice. And I went to a hot yoga class this morning for the first time in like seven years. We'll do it one more time, walking the fingertips back. And then we're just gonna walk our hands forward, tuck the toes, lift the left knee and step the right foot back, just come into a plank. Anyway, this practice that I did today challenged me and my body in such different ways. Um, it was actually really, really hard. And I think what was hard about it was just being with a new teacher and a new style. And sometimes doing something new can be really uncomfortable for us. It can bring us into a state of discomfort. But when we're experiencing that discomfort, that's a good thing, right? When we're experiencing discomfort in a practice, we're being challenged in a new way. Let's take one more breath and then maybe move through a vinyasa flow, lowering down, lifting through the heart, and then coming all the way up to our down dog, shifting the hips up, stepping the feet in. So I encourage you to try something that's outside of your comfort zone a little bit. And maybe it's just being here in this class. 
maybe it's trying a different style of class that you don't normally do. Leave our right foot where it is, lift the left leg up. And then draw the knee in, step the foot between the palms, rock forward and back. I don't think I would have done this class if it weren't for the fact that my schedule just didn't allow me to do my usual class today, but it ended up being a really great experience for me to try something new. Let's land our right knee and then lift our left arm up and then send the foot back coming to a quad stretch. I just saw someone in the waiting room and then they disappeared. <laughs> Hopefully they come back. Release the foot and then we're going to walk the fingertips back, lengthen over the left leg. I do this a few times. So a fun fact about me is that for a long time, I was a hot yoga teacher. I only taught hot yoga. I taught hot power yoga. This would have been in like 2013, 2014. And the reason why I stopped teaching hot yoga was not for any reason other than the fact that I moved to the Middle East. And the Middle East, they don't do a lot of hot yoga. <laughs> Because it's already hot yoga, right, Katie? <laughs> Let's do one more. And then just one more half monkey. And then you can walk your hands forward, tuck the right toes, lift the right knee, step back to a plank away, just push the ground away. Amazing. And then from your plank, move through another vinyasa flow and come all the way up to the down dog. So anyway, um, when I did this hot yoga class today, I was finding that I was like really dizzy. And it was probably just because I didn't have enough water and I was tired and I ended up shifting my body into child's pose a lot. Just remember that child pose is still yoga and it is the place that you can always return to. To let peace and gratitude just weave its way through your life, weave its way through your practice. Take the right leg up towards the sky, three like a dog. And then this time you're gonna draw the right knee in and we're gonna take a big step forward with the right foot between the palms and then lift the arms up towards the sky. So anyway, I, I took a lot of child's poses through this class today. And at the end of the class, the teacher said to me, you know, we're about to do inversions, but since you're a beginner, you can just do a hip opener. <laughs> and um didn't want to tell her that I run yoga teacher trainings and have a yoga app and a pretty big yoga community and I've been teaching yoga for like eight years <laughs> so I just did a hip opener <laughs> let's open the arms in a cactus and now we're going to take the right arm underneath the left and either grip the shoulders or high five the hands but anyway what I want to share about that is that in my opinion, that yoga teacher has the wrong idea about what advanced yoga is. Yeah, because advanced yoga is not things you can do with your body. It's not poses. It's not shapes. I've seen lots of people who can stand on their heads that are not nice people. Right? So are they really advanced at yoga? Let's shift weight onto the right foot, extend the left leg. Being advanced at yoga is a way of being. It's a way of interacting with the world. It's a way of interacting with yourself, with the people around you. It's not about doing fancy things with your body. So I think doing child's pose is actually not the sign of a beginner. I think doing child's pose is a sign of an advanced yogi. Because it means you have the humility to practice in a manner that is appropriate for your body in this moment right now. 
Let's lift all the way up and then just stack the left thigh on top of the right and sit low in an eagle. Knowing that the beauty in vines is their direct reflection to real life. So we all can tie ourselves up into commitments and things that don't sit well with the soul. And it's when we release them, we find freedom. So land the left foot, sweep the arms all the way up, gather everything inward. Take the palms into heart center. Allow your thumbs to connect to your heartbeat. Balance on both feet. And then lift both arms up towards the sky. Take a big inhale. And then take an exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Good, exhale, lower, plant the palms, step the feet back, move through a flow. Awesome, and then we're gonna do the opposite side. So lift your left leg up towards the sky for a three-legged dog. Good, and then draw your left knee in, step the foot between the palms, lift the arms all the way up. Good. And then open the arms into cactus and see if you can Drape the left arm underneath the right. So just go with the opposite side. Nice work. And then see if you can shift weight onto the left foot. Good, lift all the way up into your warrior three, press through the big toe. It is okay if you fall. Still a good person. And bring your knees a stack on the thigh, lift all the way up, find your eagle. Don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. Stay in this discomfort for one more breath. And then we're gonna come all the way up and then just land the feet, sweep the arms all the way up towards the sky. And then just take your palms into heart center. Let the body find the middle, let the mind find the moment. And is there wisdom in the middle? Is there wisdom in the present moment? So leave our left foot where it is. Open the right knee to the side, plant the right foot either on the shin or the thigh or the calf and just Connect the palms together. Taking one more round of breath, maybe reaching the arms open. 
And then just take the palms together, land the right foot alongside the left. And then let's go the opposite way. So leave your right foot where it is, open the left knee to the side, plant the foot on the inside of the thigh or the shin and just take the palms together. And then just land the left foot alongside the right. Take an inhale, lift your arms up towards the sky. And then exhale, fold. If you wanna move through one vinyasa flow, go for it, or just come straight back to your down dog. And from your downward facing dog, we're gonna take our right knee up towards the sky and then bring the right shin in, lay it across the width of the mat. And then just bring your body forward into your pigeon. Dear human. You've got it all wrong. You didn't come here to master unconditional love. This is where you came from and where you'll return. You came here to learn personal love, universal love, messy love, sweaty love. Crazy love, broken love, whole love, infused with divinity. Live through the grace of stumbling, demonstrated through the beauty of messing up, often. You didn't come here to be perfect. You already are. You just came here to be gorgeously human. Flawed and fabulous. And rising again into remembering. Unconditional love. Stop telling that story. Love and truth doesn't need any adjectives. It doesn't need modifiers. It doesn't require the condition of perfection. It only asks that you show up and do your best. You stay present You feel fully. You shine and fly and laugh and cry, hurt and heal, fall and get back up, play and work and live and die as you. It's enough. It's plenty. Let's lift all the way up to a down dog. And then we're just gonna set ourselves up the opposite way. So the left shin is gonna go across the width of the mat. And you're going to come into a pigeon on this opposite side, settling yourself into stillness. 
And I want to invite you to just acknowledge the fact that you've made it here. There are 12 people registered for this class, but four of you made it. <laughs> That's one in three. And that is huge because you said kind of like what Linda was saying at the start of this class, like Tommy Rosen was saying yesterday, if you do yoga 100% of the time, you're going to feel better. 100% of the time, right? Like even though I spent most of my class this morning that I attended as a student in child's pose, I still felt better. So just congratulate and thank yourself for doing that. And then when you're ready, I'm just gonna invite you to lift all the way up. And you're just gonna come all the way around onto your back body. So come all the way around, drawing the knees into the chest, just open the arms into cactus on the ground. And you're just gonna drop the knees over to the right and gaze over to the left. And then draw the knees all the way up and twist the opposite way. Bring the knees all the way up into the chest. Give the body a sweet little hug. And then just extend the legs all the way out. Let the palms be face up. Find your final resting pose through Shavasana. Let your shoulders be plugged in. Let your palms be face up. Take deep breaths in and out. I'll bring you back in a moment when the time's up.
Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you, please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be holy. Sanctuary for you. Give your fingers and toes a little wake up wiggle. Nice long stretch fingers all the way through toes. Just take the knees into the chest, give the body a nice little hug. And slowly wake your way all the way up into seated shape with the palms of the heart center. Closing with our intention, the ancient intention, the original intention. Pass from the heart of my teacher and I pass it onwards to you. And it's that our practice remain steady, that our efforts remain continuous. And our yoga helps and heals and serves and benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe, may they be happy, may they be healthy, may they be free. May the thoughts and the actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. And then we'll just finish with an ohm sound and breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and make the ohm. So taking a big breath in, big breath out, big breath in. Thank you so much, Yogi. Thank you for being here, sharing the space, sharing the practice, the light in me. It's so you can honor the light in you. Thank you. Thank you.